So summer is here. And with the pandemic winding up and borders still closed, local travel is hotter than ever. And there's been a huge run on RV sales. If you want to know how a lot of Canadians plan to take a holiday this summer, just visit anywhere that sells trailers and RVs. Oh, it's been steady, uh, very busy. We've been struggling to keep up, really. They are selling out everywhere, but we still managed to get out and have a look at some. Today we're going to show you some of the brands we've been considering. We've got some things to keep in mind before you even go out and start your search. And we've got some tips to make your search a little bit easier. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and join our adventure. We've been looking at RVs for several months now and we're starting to figure out some of the things that are important to us. Before heading out though, we have realized that there are three things that you should consider at minimum. Number one, budget. Why is that important? You really wanna have a good budget in mind because it's gonna eliminate hundreds of options for you right off the bat and make your search that much faster and efficient. We walked into a dealership not long ago. We told them the budget that we were working with and the salesperson was able to direct us to the four models that they had on that whole lot that fit within that budget. It really helped them help us a lot better. Yeah, and remember, you're also going to have to buy accessories. So that's going to add to your total bill. So figure mm -hmm. that into your budget yes. as well. Yeah. Things like hoses and leveling blocks, maybe some basic tools. Those all add up pretty quick. Yeah, so number two big consideration, trailer weight. Why is that important? Mm. So having an idea of how heavy of a trailer you're going to want or need is really going to dictate whether or not your vehicle can tow it and you need to know if your vehicle can tow it it and all of your stuff <laughs> including you um, with it and if it can't then are you willing to upgrade your vehicle or even in some cases your license be sure to check out our truck video for more information about towing capacity. Yes, and we will link to that right here in the corner. The little eye, if you click on it, it will pause this video, take you to that video in a different tab, and then you can come back here and watch the rest of this, or save that one for later. I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's, that's convenient. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number three big consideration, trailer length. So why is that important? Yes, so the, the length of your trailer is um, important because depending how long you're gonna be in it every year, you might want a longer trailer for more living space um, mm -hmm. if you're going on longer trips. Um, but also the length of trailer is gonna also um, limit you to certain features. So for example, we want a separated bedroom. We can't get that in a 16 foot trailer, but we can in a 27 foot trailer. <laughs> so just keeping those kinds of things in mind. But also keep in mind where you're going to be storing that trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, in particular for us, we had to look at our driveway length and measure it very carefully. Yes. Because we are actually limited to no longer than 27, 27 feet. feet. Um, <laughs> and make sure you're not just looking at the living space number two, right? Because a 27-foot yes. trailer will be advertised as like a 24-foot or 23-foot living area. Yes. Um, but you've still got extra space from like the ladder at the back and the hitch at the front. Mm -hmm. So look at the total length. Yes. And... Some, some people might say, oh, we'll store it off-site. Well, some places off-site might have size limitations as well. Consider the height as well. Our yeah, driveway yeah. is technically 28 feet long, but the awning of, our, um, of the garage hangs over about a foot, <laughs> and it's at a level of nine feet. And most trailers we've seen are a lot taller than nine feet. <laughs> so... Definitely yeah. don't just look at the length of, your, of the storage space, but also the height. And also keep in mind when you're camping that some camping sites actually have limits on how long of a rig mm. you can put in there. Mm -hmm. So you may be limited to certain sites. Uh, I know that 30 feet is a common cutoff for a lot of the sites. So yeah. something else to keep in mind. Yeah. So those are the three cons main considerations 
to look at when you're looking at trailers before even going out. The budget, your budget, the weight of the trailer, and the length of trailer that you're gonna want to. Now that we know our limits, we've been able to narrow in on a general floor plan that we really like. And as you go through this process, you'll start to notice that floor plans are available across most um, manufacturers with some minor differences. But as a side note, also just keep in mind that you might have a lot of must-haves and preferences. Um, there isn't, the perfect trailer does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You might not find the, the RV that checks all the boxes and um, so, you know, prioritize and separate out all your needs and from your wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've decided that there are just two things on the trailer that are real must-haves for us. Yeah. Um, number one, a door on the bedroom, so a separate bedroom. Now, why is this important to us? Uh, mostly for sleeping. Yeah. Because I like to sleep in in the morning. <laughs> and Mel is And I like to nap in the afternoon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mel's an early bird. She gets up at, you know, 5, 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, by 2 or 3 in the afternoon, we're all the way down for a little nap. Snooze. Whereas I like to sleep in until maybe like 9 or even a little bit later than that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then no napping for Just me. power through. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be nice to have a separate bedroom you know, just to, just in case the other person is up, you know, making tea, making mm -hmm. breakfast. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's number one. Number two, we want to make sure that the bedroom and the bathroom are accessible when the slides are in. Mm -hmm. Now that's a bit of an important consideration when you're traveling and you stop sort of in a non-traditional campsite. Um, for instance, if you have to stop in like a Walmart parking lot or something just overnight, or just in a rest stop for like a couple hours to catch up on some sleep. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be messing around with like leveling your trailer and putting your slides out and everything. <laughs> you want to at least be able to like use the bathroom, maybe use like the kitchen sink, that kind of thing mm -hmm. without having to do all that setup. Yeah. So that's a big must have as well. Yeah. So have an idea of how you're planning to travel. If your idea of, um, of camping is to drive to your campground or resort, and park and set up and be ready, that's awesome. Um, maybe you don't have to consider that as much. Yeah. But for us, we do plan to do a lot of longer distance traveling where we will might likely have to spend one night, you know, on the journey yeah. in, you know, kind of a, a boondocking or um, kind of situation. So um, we, yeah, we want, that to be able to happen easily. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So those are our must-haves. Uh, what are our nice-to-haves? Uh, so some of the features, it's mostly all about aesthetics. I think I mentioned in our truck video <laughs> that aesthetics are important to me. Um, we really, or we would really like light interior colors, mm -hmm. um, just so that it would feel more open. It's already going to be a small space. If there's light colors inside, it'll just feel brighter. It does, yeah. Yeah. Um, big windows would also be a plus for us, just to let in the most natural light possible. Yeah, it's nice. And then we also, we're not really wanting a bunkhouse. Um, and that's because it's just the two of us and Benny. And we've noticed that a lot of manufacturers will sacrifice bathroom <laughs> space um, in order to fit them in. And so we, I kind of want a big bathroom. Yeah, it's nice to have enough space to just, you know, <laughs> yeah. brush your teeth and move around a bit, yeah, a bit get of dressed. Counter, counter space, storage space, you know, so yeah. um, we just don't think we would get very much use out of a bunkhouse. So exactly. what's the point in having it? So even after you figure all of this out, buying a trailer is still a daunting task. <laughs> so here are three other tips that we've learned to make the process more efficient and easier so that we can hit the road faster. Number one. Here's a trick for figuring out your budget. So first of all, you probably have an idea of your maximum budget. So do an online search and set that maximum, but sort from high to low. Okay. And start scrolling through, scrolling down, until you get to the point where you start seeing some trailers that you just really don't like and you know don't meet your needs at all. 
that then can can determine sort of a bottom floor and you can set all of your future searches from that minimum to the maximum that'll help filter things out a little bit and just mm -hmm. reduce the number of choices which is good because there's a lot of choices yeah it'll cut out that low-end stuff that you don't even need to consider yeah so, yeah uh, number two if it exceeds your budget weight or length limits Avoid going down that rabbit hole, folks. <laughs> it will just leave you wanting to just see and wanting more than you have or need or want in the end. Um, it, and it just, it'll draw out the process so much longer. Um, yeah. I made the mistake of going and looking at some trailers just to see. <laughs> yeah, just, just cross them off the list. <laughs> just cross them off. Yeah, you're going to have lots <laughs> enough to have a look at without going outside of your parameters, so to speak. Yeah. yeah, tip number three, keep a list of all the brands and models, like the the, the model numbers get really confusing. Mm. So you can keep all these in a spreadsheet and then you can just kind of review them at a glance later on. Yeah. And actually, if they're in a spreadsheet, it makes it really easy to kind of sort and filter and really quickly zero in on, you know, maybe your top three choices. Yeah, we found that really helpful. All right, let's show you what we've looked at this week. Yeah, we did walkthroughs of three different brands. Now we didn't get to see the exact floor plans that we wanted to in some cases, just because dealer stocks are so low right now. Oh my gosh. Everybody is buying an RV right at this moment. <laughs> it's the year of the RV, people. <laughs> yes. Uh, but in any case, these are the three brands uh, that we really liked when, uh, out on this outing. Yeah. First of all, the Coachman Freedom Express. Um, we really liked the marble effect on the counters. They were really nice. And it had a really nice turning television that could swivel from the bedroom to the living area and I just thought that that was it was the only trailer I'd seen that on I it was, it was I have to say it was pretty efficient then you only have to have the one TV in the whole unit mm. and it can be used in two different spaces I thought that was pretty slick oh, super smart yeah um, the other one the second one that we looked at was the Keystone bullet and what we really liked about that brand was the really light <laughs> interior and the one model that we did see had this really cute kind of short closet. It was huge on the inside, but it had kind of a counter storage space on top with a window. And that just let in more light into the unit mm -hmm. and gave you that almost like a little bit of extra counter space, if you will. Yeah, right at the entrance where you might want to put things. Mm -hmm. so, so that was smart too. It looked really smart. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one we looked at was a Crossroads Sunset Trail. And the number one thing we liked about that was the king, king size, size bed. bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we like to have enough space, you know, for Benny to come into the bed. And, you know, so nice to have a large bed. Uh, also, it had a really large bathroom with, with a smart layout as well. So, yeah. And that sums it up for this week. So don't forget the three things to keep in mind when looking. Budget trailer weight and trailer length and figure out your must-haves for us it's a door on the bedroom and access to the bed and bath when the slides are in mm -hmm. and of course our tips for trailer shopping figuring out a minimum price sticking to your limits and keeping a list as a spreadsheet yeah um what we really would like to know from you guys is your opinions on the trailers that we showed you today do you think did you have a preference for, you know, the interiors and just general kind of feel of, of uh, one over the other? Um, if you have owned any of these trailers, please reach out to us either through the comments here or through our website, email. Um, yeah. We would love to hear your experience with owning one. And um, or if there's a completely different brand that you would recommend for us to check out, please let us know. We will be sure to check those out, too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And in the meantime, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, share this video with your friends, and remember, when, when you, you roam, roam everywhere, everywhere is, is home. home. And of course, our trips for trail... <laughs> and of course.
<laughs> I really like it. Okay, on to the next. So summer is here. Oh, wait, 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 slow down. Remember, we oh, look right, funny right. when we're walking really fast. Yeah. All right, we'll walk regular pace.